Hello everyone, I'm Julian, and today I'm going to discuss uh, my recent work, how to build a trapdoor function from an encryption scheme. And this is a joint work with Sanjam Garg, Mohammad Ajiabadi, and Rafael Strosky. Before telling, telling what this work is about, I would like to revisit some concept, uh, some basic concepts in, crypt in cryptography, and this will allow me to establish some notation for later. So on the left, we have the standard notion of public key encryption, which consists of three algorithms, a key generation and an encryption and a decryption algorithm. And they are defined naturally, namely that the key generation uh, outputs a key pairs, a secret and a public key. And together with the public key, the encryption algorithm allows anyone to uh, encrypt a message M and with the usage of some random coins R. And the resulting ciphertext um, can be decrypted using the uh, secret key via the decryption algorithm. On the other end, the trapdoor function is a, a very related notion, but has slightly different interfaces. And I'm going to go through them and highlight the difference in a second. Um, so the, the first algorithm is a, a, analogous, the key generation algorithm outputs an index key that shall be thought of as the public key of the scheme and a trapdoor TD that sh should be thought as the uh, secret key of the scheme. And the index key allows everybody to evaluate the function f in the forward direction, namely given an input f x, we can compute f of x efficiently. And uh, the important property of the trapdoor function is that it's uh, efficiently invertible also. Namely, we can uh, evaluate f in the inverse direction, but for this, we need the knowledge of the trapdoor. And besides having different uh, name, names for the variables, uh, these two functions have also slightly different uh, syntax, namely, that uh, uh, um, in terms of correctness, the public key encryption does not require the decryption algorithm to recover the randomness used during the encryption procedure. Whereas on the other hand, uh, the, the inversion of the function, of the trapdoor function, uh, requires one to recover the entire input X. So this is an important difference and is the central uh, 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 focus of this work. And of course, uh, it's pretty easy to see that trapdoor functions uh, generically imply public key encryption, but the other direction of the implication is not known. And uh, the focus of this work is to make progress on this question. So before telling you what the exact results of this work are, let me uh, tell you exactly what kind of security we want from a, from a trapdoor function. And the, the canonical security notion is that of one wayness. And one wayness intuitively says that the function should be R to invert. But of course, we need to define a distribution over the inputs. Uh, the easiest distribution is just when the uh, input X is uniformly sampled over the domain of the function. And we call this notion uh, just simply one way, one wayness. But we can ask for something more, namely, uh, we can uh, re require X to be from an arbitrary distribution uh, as long as it has enough, uh, enough, enough mean entropy. And uh, we, we call this requirement the deterministic security. And this is of course a strict generalization of the uniform case. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with the, with the concept, this is also called uh, deterministic encryption in the literature, depending on uh, whom you're talking with. Okay, so here are our results. So our main result is a compiler that starts from a primitive, which uh, we call robust int in PRG, which is something we define in this work. And we also provide a construction from uh, either the learning with error assumption or the computational diff Hellman assumption. And it takes, takes this building block together with a public key encryption scheme and obtains the corresponding trapdoor function. Um, and depending on the exact public key that we uh, public key encryption that we uh, plug into our compiler, we obtain a slightly different flavor uh, of the raptor function. As an example, if we, if we plug in an, an identity-based encryption, we obtain something which is called identity-based raptor function. Uh, on the other hand, if we plug in an attribute-based encryption, um, we uh, obtain something which is called an attribute-based raptor function, and the same holds for, for a predicate encryption. Um, and all of these, uh, uh, um, all of these trapdoor functions, they satisfy the strong notion of deterministic security. And one caveat of this transformation is that the input public key encryption needs to have pseudo random ciphertext, 
over some uh, over some group, which is doesn't have to be an abelian group, but uh, it, it needs to be um, it needs to have a, a well-defined group operation. Um, but natural schemes uh, always satisfy this uh, this this requirement. And so, right. So, what does our what does our work advance in the grand scheme of thing of things? Um, so, in terms of TDF, it doesn't really uh, Im imply any any uh, uh, results from any new assumption that we didn't know before. Besides giving a, a, a modular a more modular uh, way to construct raptor functions, but already in terms of identity based raptor functions. We show the first construction from the computation of the Kelman assumption in pairing free groups. Um, and prior to our work, we only knew how to construct identity based raptor functions from uh, pairings or learning with errors. And in terms of attribute based raptor function and uh, predicate raptor functions, we are not aware of any other work that obtained a construction under any computational assumption, whereas by uh, plugging in the appropriate um, the appropriate encryption scheme, we obtain constructions uh, from bilinear pairings for NC1 uh, predicates and from LWE for all for all polynomial size circuits. So this is our main result. Um, as a bonus, as a bonus result, we uh, introduce a notion which is called trapdoor garbling. And uh, the syntax of trapdoor garbling is exactly the same as uh, the uh, any other garbled circuit scheme. And uh, so given a, a, a common randomness R, there is a garbling, a garbling scheme consists of a garbling procedure that takes as input a circuit and outputs a garbled version of the circuit C tilde. And there's an alternative encoding procedure uh, that uh, allows one to encode, prepare an input X and using the same, uh, the same pool of random coins uh, prepare an encoded input x tilde. And normally, the standard syntax of garbled circuits allows one to uh, recover c of x, whereas we have slightly uh, orthogonal requirements. Namely, we have a decoding algorithm that takes as input both the garbled circuit and the garbled input. And if the circuit evaluates one, then the decoding output just the output of the circuit, whereas Whereas if the circuit evaluates to zero, then the decoding also outputs the entire set of randomness. So in a sense, we make garbled circuits randomness recoverable. Um, we use this as an intermediate notion to achieve stronger security guarantees for our trapdoor functions, but we, we believe that um, this is a notion of independent interest and actually constructing it turns out to be quite non-trivial. And um, we propose two constructions one from the DDH assumption and one from the LWE assumptions. And those use uh, uh, the randomness uh, key circularity properties of the BHHO encryption scheme. And if you're curious, I encourage you to use the paper there to see the paper. And yeah, we believe that uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, that this, this primitive will find soon uh, interesting applications. Okay, so now throughout the rest of the talk, I'm just going to ignore this part. And again, I encourage you to look at the paper if you're curious, and I'm going to focus on our main compiler. And uh, before uh, getting into our construction, I have to define what are intim PRGs, and in particular, what are robust intim PRGs. So uh, a, a hinting PRG, a PRG stands for pseudo-random generator, by the way. Um, a uh, uh, hint in PRG uh, start with the sampling of a uniform seed, and uh, uh, the robust the robust requirement comes from the fact that we don't limit this distribution the distribution of this seed to be uniform. But again, we consider uh, an arbitrary distribution so long as they have enough probability mass. Um, and uh, well, the idea is that uh, this this uh, Hinton PRG will take this seed, uh, which for simplicity now we consider it to be a binary string from zero one to the power of lambda and produce lambda many L bit blocks. So while well, setting L to be greater than one, 
every L, L can be can be thought of as the as of the uh, uh, the stretch of the PRG. So by setting it greater than one, we obtain uh, expanding PRG. And uh, it is useful to visualize the uh, transformation of a hinting PRG in blocks, which we'll keep for for the rest of the talk. And uh, now the important part of hinting PRG is their security definition. And their security definition is as follows. We want that the two, two distribution visualized here are computationally indistinguishable. So uh, on the right hand side, we have uh, a distribution of lambda many L bit blocks, which are completely uniform. So they are just uniformly sampled um, and arranged in this two by n matrix. On the left side, on the other hand, um, we have a two by n matrix where the for each column, the row corresponding to the bit of the seed is set to be uh, the ith block of the hinting PRG, whereas the other row is set to be a uniformly sampled block. And again, the requirement is that these two distributions are computationally indistinguishable. Um, and uh, I think it's useful to, uh, to remark that uh, such security does not follow immediately by a hybrid argument of a PRG. And the reason is that the position of the blocks on the left distribution depends uh, on the bit representation of the seed. So uh, there is a circularity in the argument that one cannot just uh, wash away with a hybrid argument. So you need um, more structured assumptions in order to um, in order to construct those. And we show in the paper how how to construct these from uh, from the computational Diffie-Hellman problem or from the LW assumption, uh, though uh, our construction are heavily based on prior works and essentially account only for uh, changing the parameter and a slightly different analysis. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm ready to uh, present our main construction, which is uh, a way to compile a public key encryption into a hinting PRG. And we call this in the paper a, uni a universal TDFire, and uh, it works as long as the public key encryption has pseudorandom ciphertext. And for the sake of this talk, I'm just going to assume that they are just uniformly or computationally distinguishable from uniformly sampled binary strings. And again, for simplicity, I'm going to only treat the case of public key encryption, whereas the case of identity based encryption and attribute based encryption will follow essentially immediately. Uh, of course, in the paper, we uh, present this in the most general form as possible. So these are the ingredients. So all is left to do is now uh, to describe our trapdoor function. So the index key consists of the public key of the public key encryption scheme, the public parameters of the hinting PRG, and lambda many uh, um, uniformly sampled string from the uh, domain 01 gamma, where again, gamma is the domain of the ciphertext. So it's the bit length of the ciphertext. Um, the trapdoor naturally of, the, of, our, uh, of, our, of our trapdoor function is said to be the secret key of the encryption scheme. Now let us see how to evaluate the function. So the function is going to be evaluated bit by bit on input uh, lambda bit string x uh, for uh, all indices i and one to lambda. We're going to set yi to be an encryption of zero so there is actually nothing special about zero this can be actually any distinguished string so long as it's going to be publicly recognizable we just set it to zero for convenience where the random coins of this encryption scheme is going to be the ith block of the hinting prg evaluated on x so this is what this notation means so here there's an index i here uh, so this is going to be uh, what yi is set if the ith bit of x is equal to zero, whereas if the ith bit of x is equal to one, we're going to set it to be the same thing, except that we are going to XOR the resulting ciphertext with uh, ri, which is the uh, ith block of the public parameters. And recall that um, the ciphertexts are in, uh, are always lambda bit string, sorry, always gamma bit string. So this operation is always well-defined. Um, good. So now 
yi up to y lambda is just going to be the output of our trapdoor function. And so let's see, given the trapdoor, how we can invert it. Um, well, we can recover essentially the uh, input bit by bit. Uh, again, for indices i from one to lambda, we can just set xi to be equal zero if the decryption of yi is equal to zero and one otherwise. And correctness is actually pretty easy to argue, uh, though one has to be a little bit careful uh, uh, about the union bound that doesn't kill the efficiency of the scheme. Okay, so uh, as I said, this is pretty much our compiler and it is so simple that I can even give you a proof sketch why that should be, uh, should, should, should satisfy one wayness. And after that is going to be the conclusion of my talk. So bear with me for a few more minutes. Um, so, and as, as usual, the proof will be by a hybrid, by a hybrid argument where we're going to uh, modify the distribution of the challenge image. And then we're going to uh, argue about the indistinguishability of neighboring distributions. So the first hybrid is just the original distribution. The challenge image is uh, sampled uniformly from the, um, uh, uh, from the uh, distribution as defined by the Traptor function. Um, in H1, we're going to program the index key after seeing the uh, challenge image. So namely, um, we're going to set the blocks ri to be uh, uh, as follows. So for each, for each index i from 1 to lambda, if uh, xi, which is going to be the challenge uh, pre-image, if xi is equal to 0, we're going to set ri to be um, yi, which is, again, an encryption uh, of zero using the random coins as the random coins, the ith block of the int in PRG. So this, this piece here, uh, XOR with some uniformly sampled string SI. Uh, again, SI is sampled uh, from, the, from the appropriate domain. Um, whereas if XI is going to be equal to one, uh, we're going to sample uh, YI uh, uniformly and Ri as the XOR of this uniform string with an encryption of zero un using the appropriate block of the int in PRG. Um, and actually, if you squint very, very, very carefully, you, you will notice that we didn't really do anything. And we've just been uh, moving variables around. So these, these two distributions are actually identical. Um, so, so, so far, nothing has happened. Um, so in the next step, um, instead of computing SI uniformly, we're going to compute it as an encryption of zero. Although note that I'm not specifying the random coins here. So this means that SI is going to be sampled using uniformly sampled randomness. And uh, now we can argue that uh, uh, since the encryption scheme is pseudo-random ciphertext, then um, uh, encryptions of zero are computationally indistinguishable to, uh, to random string. That's the definition of pseudo-random ciphertext. So computation and indistinguishability of these two hybrids follow. Um, now in the next hybrid, uh, we're going to compute all ciphertext uh, as uh, encryption of zero using truly random coins. And um, the security here does not follow immediately from the fact that the coins are pseudo-random, but one really needs the uh, security of the hint in PRG. And the reason is that the position of the ciphertext does leak something about the seed, but it turns out that that leakage is precisely the leakage which is allowed by the hint in PRG. So again, computation and distinguishability follows, uh, follows by a simple invocation of that property. Um, finally, as the last step, we can change all ciphertexts uh, of the uh, challenge image as encryptions of one. And at this point, since all ciphertexts were previously computed with uh, truly, uh, truly uniform coins, we can appeal to the CPA security of the encryption scheme. And yeah, finally, the proof is concluded by observing that at this point, the challenge image is no pre-image and therefore it cannot be inverted. And 
With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and conclude my talk.